A perfect surgery begins with perfect ports. These are the golden rules you should abide by when you are on the road to become a brilliant phaco surgeon. Hi, this is Dr. Simanchil Goel and today in this video we are going to demonstrate you why the creation of the ports is the most important step in the phaco surgery which dictates the final visual result the patient is going to have. So coming back to the image that I am showing you, this is an ideal case to show you how the main ports and the side ports should be created. As you can see, there is no single technique to a good surgery. A surgeon should be a versatile surgeon. And yes, now I'm going to show you how a veteran operates. So as you can see, these limbal vessels alongside the side ports that I have made and some limbal vessels that you can see in the inferior area or the main port. And now let's see this is the way to go 90 percent of the cases that you're going to encounter in your career will be grade 2 grade 3 soft cataract they won't be hard they won't be too soft and the best way to go is that you should have your side ports in 180 degree meridian and the main port should be just perpendicular to the side ports mind you they are not interior they are not posterior into the conjunctiva they are along the limbus and once you create these ports it should bleed once you achieve those bleeding once you achieve those delicate nicking of the limbal vessels you are on the road to have a good sealing ports which cause the best astigmatic result and the minimum chances of endophthalmitis in the post-op period. As I've shown this photograph, the direction of the main port and the direction of the side ports should be towards the center of the cornea such that all the three lines and the all the three directions that you play inside your head, an imaginary line should intersect in the center of the cornea. Once you achieve this, you're going to have 6 by 6 unaided vision in patients having ATR. You all must try this golden rule in all your future surgeries. So as I have again showed you, this is the most important pearl of wisdom that I want to give you all is to make these side ports that cancel each other in the center of the cornea and the main port should be around three clock hours away from the side ports that is just perpendicular nicking the main vessels and yes the patient is going to have six by six mark my words coming back to a second scenario which i'm i want to lay stress on is the patient's having positive vitreous pressure. Positive vitreous pressure leads to rexis runout situations and recurrent AC shallowing. So in these cases, I've noticed creating a long tunnel out of thousands of surgeries that I've operated. These are my experiences. They're not textbook things that I have read somewhere. These are my experiences from which you can learn. A long tunnel causes slow egress of visco and slow egress of aqueous and uh, RL fluid when you are operating. So positive vitreous pressure also leads to a lot of chances of having iris prolapse. And once you create a long tunnel, you decrease all those chances having a very, very peaceful and a calm surgery. The third scenario I want to lay stress on is the pupils that don't dilate. I have, I've just made a pupil that is small and in these cases, I have noticed in my experience to make these side ports and main ports towards clear cornea. Once you make these side ports and main port towards the clear cornea, not too close to the center of the cornea, but yes, two or three mm gap with the limbus is sufficient for a safe surgery. It decreases the chances of iris prolapse to a large, large extent. When I was teach when I was learning FACO from my guru, from my teacher, he used to tell me always, always, always create these main ports and the side ports towards the center of the cornea in small pupils to decrease chances of iris prolapse. The fourth scenario, as we all know, 90% of the patients, 90% of the elderly patients that we encounter in our 
OPDs have high ATR. For high ATR, always make temporal incisions. And for even high ATRs, 1.5 diopter ATRs or 2 diopter ATRs, you can, the patient, when the patient is non affording for the toric IULs, you can create a shorter tunnel for more astigmatic neutralization. And you can even make a 3.2 mm main port to cause the flattening of the horizontal meridian. Thereby, you can even decrease 0.75 or even 1 diopters of astigmatism leading to those happy smiles and brilliant 6x6 visions without a toric IUL, yes. 10% of the patients that you encounter have high WTR and creating a temporal incision in these patients is a blunder. So I think it is really, really wise to make superior incisions in these patients with high with the rule astigmatism. With the rule astigmatism should alert you to sit superiorly and make those superior tunnels. All right. This is the sixth point that I want to tell you. No single technique to be a good surgeon. Yes, you should be a versatile surgeon. The eighth point, hypermature senile cataracts have, we all know, have a lot of chances for excess run out. In these cases, I don't make main port first. I just make one side port. I stain the capsule and then I start my rexes. So the side port that I make, the first side port, the right hand side side port, I make it long consciously because a long side port decreases the speed of visco egress. Once you decrease the speed of visco egress, it causes you to put visco less frequently. You don't have to put visco repeatedly, thereby increasing your chances to make a CCC in first go. You don't have to put the four, four, four sips and the chances of accidents also decrease. In toric IULs, I always create main port on the horizontal as the marking shows. And yes, I usually, I usually for toric IULs, your main ports and side ports should be in the direction should be perpendicular and should be neutralizing astigmatically. The horizontal marking that you do preoperatively, your main port should pass just beneath that mark. And the three dots that I've shown you for pictorial purposes, for illustration, these are the mark markings where I will implant the IUL in the final position. All right. So coming to the last scenario, 16 cut RK used to be really common 20 or 30 years back. And the best way to operate these cases is to make a scleroconial tunnel. You can easily negotiate two side ports between two incisions, but not a main port. As you can see, the width between two RK incisions is small as compared to my main port. So I just create some conjunctival flap create a scleroconial tunnel that is around 3 mm in the length and I go between the sclera between layers of sclera dissecting and I go into clear cornea and then I can enter the AC. This is the safest way to operate a 16 cut RK. Coming to the most dangerous point in the last scenario it is a 32 cut RK. Although you won't encounter these cases but recently, just recently, a few weeks back, I operated a lady with 32 katarke in the, both the eyes. I had to implant toric IELs in both the eyes and it's a landmine to operate, mind you. Landmine is the right word when you operate a case like that. Once you make those side ports superimposed on RK incisions, you are gone. You are gone. That's what... I I was about to land on a landmine when when I got lucky and the patient got a good result. But you should learn from my mistakes. Yes, two side ports can be negotiated in between two 32 cut RK incisions, but the main port needs to be 
under a sclerocornial tunnel yes these are the eight techniques that i have learned from operating thousands of cases from committing a lot of mistakes and i want to hand you over this knowledge that i have gathered in the years to come that's all from my side thank you and have a nice day